Prince Anne County. Humans have always been explorers. As a species, we are innately curious about what lies beyond our horizon. If the day ever comes when we embark across the cosmic oceans beyond our moon, what vessels will we use to discover new worlds? Few art projects capture the wonder and awe of voyaging to an unfamiliar planet better than the Explorer series. Brought to life by incredible digital artist Christian Grajewski, the story is set in the distant future, where the remnants of humanity journey to a lush exoplanet called Ion. The ongoing Explorer project doesn't just examine a vibrant alien ecosystem, but also documents the fascinating vehicles the early explorers used to chart the unfamiliar planet. So, for this entry into the archive, we'll tag along with the first wave of explorers, and voyage across this mysterious world in a range of different machines. And as always, you can follow and support the artist using the links in the description. Now, let's set off towards Planet Ion. We set out from Planet Earth on the Oria, the greatest construction project in human history. And after a brief journey of 317 years, we arrive. To explore Planet Ion up close, we must leave behind the safety of the mothership. Landing on the planet's surface, for the first stage of our expedition, we'll be traveling in the Ant, a compact research vessel that will make exploring Planet Ion safer and more efficient. Setting off from our landing site, it's not long before we spot our first life form. Stooping for a drink in a shallow creek are unique bipedal herbivores. They're tall, over two and a half meters, or nine feet, and have an elegant appearance. Like Earth deer, they seem rather skittish, bounding across the terrain as we pass by. A few of them stand their ground, not interested in abandoning their prime watering hole. Using their two lower horns, they begin to produce a rattling noise that seems intended to frighten away predators. But perhaps it isn't us these deer are scared of. Emerging from the underbrush are the first predators we've seen on this planet. These are the Silent Death, and they are built for the chase. Like cheetahs, their aerodynamic bodies are capable of incredible bursts of speed. Similar to many lifeforms on Ion, the Silent Death lack eyes, instead relying on sonar-like echolocation. Soon, a chase will begin between predator and prey a drama known to most planets with complex life. Driving through a marshy swampland, we can spot a rather singular-looking lifeform. These bizarre herbivores are a member of the Forminus caput classification, a taxon marked by the sizable holes in the middle of their skull. Getting a closer look at this alarming gap, we can see the hole serves as an enormous olfactory organ with sensitive hairs giving the creature an incredible sense of smell, an extreme, yet effective, anatomical feature. With their long snouts and tongues, this species somewhat resembles an anteater. The exact function of their tongues isn't known, but likely helps them snag their preferred food source from the swampy water. Yet in this marshland, sticking your tongue in the water can be dangerous. From the murky depths, a menacing predator lifts themselves on two muscular arms. With a length of 11 meters, or 36 feet, this semi-aquatic lifeform is the largest carnivore we've seen so far. Like the alligators or crocodiles of Earth, these patient hunters ambush their prey from the water, drowning them or swallowing them whole. Their snake-like bodies make them excellent swimmers, and their strong arms paired with their spring-like musculature allows for explosive movements. Passing near the water's edge is a risky venture. Yet one titan in this watering hole pays little mind to what lurks below the surface. This is a stag beetle rhino, and they spend their days combing through the swamp in search of tasty vegetation. Curiously, their breathing organ is at the highest point of their tail, helping them stay underwater for longer. 
Strange as that might sound, various earth beetles breathe through sphericals in the rear of their abdomen. When plodding through the swamp, stag beetle rhinos use two antennae on their backs to create whip-like sounds that warn predators to keep their distance, for no species wants to end up on the receiving end of their horn. For the next stage of our tour, we'll need to travel in something that can handle all manner of terrain. The Monkey is a futuristic research vehicle suitable for the most challenging environments, and will take us into the teeming forests of this alien world. And speaking of monkeys, in the branches above us are the ion equivalent of primates. The Odelion is a somewhat odd-looking herbivore that feeds on the foliage of the high canopy. Like the woolly monkeys of the Amazon rainforest, moving from branch to branch is second nature to the Odelion. This field sketch shows the Odelion's method of traversing the canopy, a locomotive strategy that might look backwards to us, but serves them well. Curiously, the Odelion seems to lack teeth altogether, instead opting for long, muscular lips, a trait that helps them pluck leaves off the high branches. Deeper in the forest, from the bank of a forest stream, a brightly hued creature is watching us. This is a Toxicorum, a mid-sized predator with highly poisonous skin. Like the vivid colors of a sea slug, the Toxicorum's coloration is aposematic, warning other predators against taking a bite. And if a Toxicorum subdues its prey, they drink their victim's internal liquid using their tentacles. We're fortunate to be behind protective glass. Among the flooded roots of the forest is an exceedingly rare gathering. These bizarre creatures are Mania Caputs, and there are just a few thousand of them left on this planet. Their giant heads can make a deep drumming sound when threatened, and house highly sensitive receptive organs. Typically solitary, the Mania Caputs will call out to each other over thousands of kilometers during breeding season, and come to congregate in forests like this one. We're lucky to be able to observe such an infrequent ceremony, but it's best to give them some privacy. In a dense region of the forest, a standoffish-looking creature blocks the path of our vehicle. This is a turtleneck, a solitary lifeform that, despite being a herbivore, is an aggressive bully that doesn't tolerate intruders. Like rhinos, turtlenecks will charge any lifeform they deem a trespasser. Two shield-like protrusions protect the sides of their body, and seem to envelop their heads. These shields can change from soft and flexible to hard and rigid in an instant, allowing the turtlenecks to ram into their targets at high speeds without risk of injury. Our best move is to take the long way around the turtleneck's territory. In a nearby clearing, a small flock of bipedal omnivores hiss at our vehicle as it passes. These pint-sized creatures resemble alien chickens, although instead of a beak, they possess a muscular hole for a mouth, surrounded by four frenzied tentacles. Like Earth shorebirds, these generalists scavenge often for food. They've become unexpectedly fast little creatures in pursuit of small insects that are the alien chicken's favorite food, which this field sketch illustrates. To aid in this endeavor, their tentacles are sticky and act like fly swatters, bringing insects directly into their gullet. To chart the next region, we'll be traversing in crickets, lightweight helicopters capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Try to stay close, for we're passing through an area home to the largest megafauna on this planet. Looking up at us as we pass overhead is a herd of boneheads. These bellowing behemoths possess a triangular hole in the middle of their head that serves as an olfactory organ, marking them as another member of the Forminus caput classification. Like hippos, the boneheads have evolved to spend most of their time partially submerged in water, which helps support their significant bulk. Connected to the bonehead's hollow skulls are flexible, fishing rod-like trunks they use to catch aquatic lifeforms. For the boneheads are omnivores, feeding on all manner of underwater organisms to stay satiated. Turning westward, we can spot a noisy procession of circulus. 
Another type of Formanus caput. Their circular head gives them the ability to make a unique, loud call. The distorted shape of their skull amplifies the noise. Although the result is a face that looks rather unusual by our standards, the Circulus also possesses two tentacles that they use for smelling, navigating their environment with their keen olfactory senses. Not far from the Circulus procession, a group of clumsy and colorful looking bipeds slurp from the muddy water. These are Anguis columns, and they are on the small side for this region at about 1 meter, or 3 feet. These omnivores might be unassuming, but they feed in a somewhat unsettling manner. As this field sketch shows, the anguish columns use their long tongues to dig into muscle-like creatures, then blow poison into them and wait until their soft tissue becomes liquid, a disquieting way to get a meal, although nature is often unforgiving. Snow and harsh winds block our path to the north, so we'll hitch a brief ride in the massive Frog, a mobile research lab that moves on wheels over 14 meters, or 45 feet high. In a vehicle like this, we're ready for anything, and it seems we've attracted the attention of something equally massive. This inquisitive giant is called a Gantor, and they seem puzzled, but not particularly bothered, by our presence here. At nearly 25 meters, or 82 feet in length, gantors are an incredible species to witness up close. Yet even more impressive than the gantors' sheer size is their remarkable intelligence. Gantors possess two trunk-like appendages that play an important role in their communication. During mating season, they seem to use their tongue for some kind of sign language, to impress and talk to their favorite partner. Exactly how intelligent gantors are is difficult to ascertain, but it's possible we've just made first contact with something very special. To venture further out into the unknown, we'll be taking to the skies once again in lightweight aircrafts called geese. Don't let their unusual shape fool you. These crafts are fast and agile enough to get us an up-close look at the rarest life forms. Trumpeting at us while we pass overhead is a herd of what appears to be alien elephants. Yet what seem to be large ears from a side view are actually massive bone structures surrounded by soft muscle tissue. Their unique skull also contains a large hole, marking them as another member of the Formanus caput classification. Like the Circulus, this unique head acts as a powerful sound amplifier for the thunderous calls of these alien elephants, calls they can use to connect over vast distances. For unlike the social elephants of Earth, these curious creatures spend much of their life cycle all alone. Landing for a moment to stretch our legs, we make an unsettling discovery. Not far from our position are three Cytus Mortums, the most dangerous hypercarnivores on planet Ion. The aerodynamic shape of these terrors allows them to make tight turns when pursuing a target, and reach blazing speeds. Like Earth Tigers, their efficient musculature helps them take down prey many times larger than they are. Yet unlike tigers, these predators hunt in coordinated packs. And with the strongest bite force on the planet, the Cytus Mortums have no natural enemies. Our best move now is to get back in our vehicles and fly in the opposite direction. Back in the skies once more, we pass over a valley home to the single largest land animals on the planet. This is a herd of Tortugantus, creatures that from tip to tail are over 100 meters, or 300 feet in length. Witnessing a Tortugantus is like seeing a god walk upon the soil of a planet. With such massive bodies, the Tortugantus herd spends much of their days finding food, mainly in the form of vegetation. Herds like this one can contain up to 50 individuals, and are remarkably close-knit, as the intelligent Tortugantus are capable of feeling empathy for their fellow herd members. For the final and most spectacular leg of our journey, we'll be traveling in the top-of-the-line hornets, 
These vessels can travel vast distances without stopping, which is important, for we'll be flying over the planet's ocean. On the rocky coast, a somewhat unusual group pays little attention to our passing crafts. These are snail frogs, agile and rather playful omnivorous creatures. Their upper and lower body have sail-like structures, which seem to be used to make snail frogs look bigger to predators and to impress fellow members of their species. Like earth snails, snail frog stalk eyes are capable of 360 degree rotation, and they give the species a distinctive and somewhat amusing looking appearance. Snail frogs primarily feed on mollusk-like creatures in shallow tide pools, which they scratch from the rocks using their powerful four-part jaws. Moving out to sea, we can spot our first group of fully aquatic life forms swimming just under the surface. Chasing a group of fish analogs are the Triangulus stingray, pursuit predators with slim, aerodynamic bodies. Like Earth's stingrays, they possess barbs capable of producing venom. Yet the Triangulus stingrays possess three forward-facing barbs instead of one in the rear, which they use to spear their prey. With their triangular wing shape, these hunters can stop almost immediately, or change direction when pursuing a meal. Further out to sea, a larger, more terrifying creature dwells in the depths. Up to 11 meters, or 35 feet in length, these predators prefer to hunt in the colder reaches of Planet Ion. Nicknamed alien seals, these lifeforms are swift in the water. Like Earth seals, however, when it comes to land, they can't do much but flop about. Some say these alien seals look quite peaceful when lying on the shore, although the sight is difficult to imagine, considering how menacing they look when prowling the dark depths. We can be glad we're not in the water. Yet the air doesn't seem safe either. A flock of huge flying creatures soar just beyond our hornets. These are red deads, and with a wingspan of almost 30 meters, or 100 feet, we might be in serious trouble. Yet despite a name that suggests aggressive behavior, red deads are actually quite peaceful. While from time to time they do have aggressive fights with rivals, hence the nickname, these majestic beings aren't here to pick a fight with us. Like dolphins accompanying earth boats, Red Deads are naturally inquisitive, and are flying alongside their new airborne mates out of sheer curiosity. Little else is known about these beautiful red beings, although given their size, they likely have no natural predators. Soaring alongside this flock is a special privilege. Yet our voyage is not over yet. Breaching near the surface are the final lifeforms we'll be observing on this tour. This is a family of Imanis cetacea, the largest living, moving creatures yet discovered on this planet. Dipping under the surface in an underwater pod, we can see that like baleen whales, these leviathans comb the oceans with their giant mouths and eat everything that comes their way. Yet at over 110 meters, or 360 feet in length, they make even the largest earth whales seem rather small. In the unspoiled oceans of Ion, families of Amanus cetacea lead calm and peaceful lives. And as incredible as it's been to get close to this species, we don't want to disrupt said lives. The time has come to head back. Journeying through the ecosystems of planet Ion has been fascinating. You can discover more of the incredible vehicles featured in this video in Christian Gryevsky's Explorer art book, which I've got a link to in this video's description. There are big plans for this universe, as Gryevsky is working with other creatives on a novel and a screenplay, and is also releasing a second art book that will focus on the creatures and the narrative of this exciting world. To stay up to date on the project, follow and support Christian Gryevsky using the links in the description. I'm excited to see where the project goes next. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.